Hi, welcome back to Joe Blogs. This video is the next in a series looking at the financial implications of Russia's invasion of Ukraine on the global economy. And in today's episode, I want to talk about the refined oil ban and price cap that are both coming into effect on the day that this video is being posted, the 5th of February. As you'll no doubt be aware, the price cap and also the European ban on seaborne crude oil both came into effect on December the 5th. But the refined oil products were given another couple of months because Europe was highly dependent on these products and it's difficult to be able to get replacements because generally speaking you don't transport refined products over the same sort of distances that you transport crude. They tend to be on smaller vessels and therefore go shorter distances. But the ban is now in effect and in today's video I want to go through the impact that this is going to have both on the Russian economy and also on the European economy because this ban will mean that Europe has to buy more expensive product. The main reason that Europe's been buying Russian oil over the last 30 years is because it was the cheapest in the market. So this ban and price cap are going to have an impact on the whole global economy, not just on Russia. So in today's episode, we'll go through the ban and the price cap in a bit more detail. We'll have a look at what's been happening with regards to the ban and the price cap on crude oil, which has now been in place for two months. We'll then go through some calculations and have a look at what the estimated impact on revenue is going to be for Russia. We'll then have a look at what the impact on crude oil is going to be because refined products are basically produced using crude oil. And so if there's a drop in the volume of refined products from Russia's perspective, that's going to cause them a problem because they're producing almost 10 million barrels of oil every single day. And a lot of that is going to their refineries. So if there is a drop in the sale of those refined products, that's going to mean that they won't have that same demand and so they'll be a big problem potentially from a production point of view. We'll then have a look at some shipping data which links directly to the price cap that's been introduced and then finally today I'll wrap up with my summary as to what I think the impact of this will be on Russia and the global economy. So before we get started on all of that if I could ask you for a thumbs up at some point during this video if you're enjoying the content please subscribe if you haven't done so already. Don't forget I always include chapters so you don't have time to watch everything you can pick and choose what you'd like to see and if you would like to support the channel please have a look below where you'll find links to YouTube super thanks and membership as well as buy me a coffee and Patreon. And as always thank you so much to everyone that has supported the channel I really appreciate it. As of today all European countries are now banned from buying any refined products from Russia and we now have another set of price caps relating to Russian products. And the reason that I'm saying price caps rather than price cap is that we're talking about a variety of different refined products all of which trade at different prices. So if we start by talking about the ban, there are actually a number of bans already in place across the world. The UK, the USA and Canada all came out shortly after the war started and stated that they no longer wanted to buy any products from Russia. So they've had a self-imposed ban. But the European Union didn't join in that ban predominantly because it would have caused too many problems in all of the economies. Because a lot of countries in the European Union had a high dependence on Russian oil products at the start of this war and therefore they needed a plan to be able to work out how they were going to replace all of those products without causing a major crash in their own economy. And the reason that the ban on refined products was delayed by a further two months compared to the crude ban was that the refineries only have a certain amount of capacity and so you need to make sure that you've got sufficient supplies of gasoline and diesel diesel and kerosene and aircraft fuel and all of the other things that consumers and businesses are using on a daily basis. So getting these alternative supplies in place was a really important part of making sure that this ban became effective. But as of today the ban is now fully in place and Russia is going to lose all of its sales that it was previously making to the European Union and we'll come on to have a look at what that equates to in a minute. Now in terms of the price cap for refined products this will operate in the same way as the crude oil price cap that came in on the 5th of December. However, it is a lot more complicated because there are so many different refined products. The price cap for crude oil has been set at a flat $60 and that means that any deals that Russia agrees have to be done at $60 or less and if they're struck above $60 then that would invalidate any insurance that's provided by the G7, Norway and the EU or it will mean that the ships that are owned by those countries will refuse to take that cargo. So that's relatively easy to monitor. However, it's not quite as simple as that for refined products. This diagram provides a simplified version of the refining process. So on the far left hand side here we've got crude oil which is the raw material that refineries start with. The crude oil is then heated to break it down into a variety of different refined products and they then go through a variety of different procedures including catalytic cracking, extraction, ultraforming, de-waxing, treating and blending and a variety of other processes. And on the far right hand side of this diagram we can see a variety of the finished products including gasoline, jet fuel, 
kerosene, heating and diesel fuels, industrial fuel oil, waxes, lubricating oils, greases, petroleum coke and asphalts. And the reason I wanted to share this diagram with you is it gives you a flavour as to the number of different refined products that are being produced. And depending on what the demand is in each market, there will be a different breakdown of what's actually produced. And the issue with these refined products is that they all have a different price point. You'll know yourself when you go to the pumps to fill up your vehicle that there's a differential between the price of gasoline and diesel. And that also applies to jet fuel and kerosene and industrial fuel oil and petroleum coke and all of the other things on this list. And that's what makes bringing in a price cap for refined products challenging because you've got all these different price points and so you can't just apply one flat price as has been done with crude oil. So the price caps are now in place for refined products and they've been set at around 30% below the market rate which is similar to where the price cap was set for crude oil initially. Now whilst we're on the issue of price caps I thought it'd be useful to have a look at what's been happening with regards to the crude oil price cap, how effective that's been and what's been happening to the price of Russian crude oil. This chart shows the difference between the price of Russian Urals oil and Brent crude oil over the last 12 months. So you can see that 12 months ago, before Russia's invasion of Ukraine started, the differential was very small, around 3% in the market. However, after the invasion started, we saw a big differential appearing. And by April, the differential had got down to almost 40%. And this was at the point where a lot of countries had walked away from their supply agreements with Russia. They didn't want to take any more Russian oil. And there was a major backlash against Russia in the market. However, things then stabilized and we saw the price differential actually starting to reduce. And over the summer period, it started to come back down. And by the end of June, the differential had actually come down to around 24%. And the price differential remained at around 24% until the European ban and the price cap came into effect on the 5th of December. And since that time, we've seen the discount on Russian oil increase dramatically and it's now running above 30%. And just to emphasize that point, this chart shows the movement in Brent crude oil prices over the last 12 months. And you can see that this time last year, a barrel of crude oil was trading for around $90. That price actually increased to $120 in both March and May. But since that time, we've seen a global slowdown. We've seen a reduction in demand for oil. And over the course of the last seven months or so, we've seen oil prices coming down to the current level of around $75 per barrel. Now, if we look at the chart for Russian oil over the last 12 months, you can see that this time last year, a barrel of Russian oil was trading for around $95. However, it didn't hit the same peaks. The maximum price that we've seen for Russian oil was around $110 in March. It then peaked again around June time at around $100. And since that time, the price has come down to the current level of around $54 per barrel. So this compares to $75 in the open market for non-Russian oil. So you can see that there's been a consistent discount and the discount has moved in line with the market. And I think the part of the graph that's really interesting to look at is the period after December the 5th. So once the price cap came in of $60 at that point, Russian oil has not sold above that price at any moment. And Russia has come out and stated that it does not comply with the oil price cap. It's not agreeing to it. Any country that signs up to the price cap will be blacklisted and won't be given any Russian oil. So that's what they're saying. That's the official line. However, when you look at the reality of what's been happening, Russia has been selling its oil below the price cap. Now, the market price for oil is above the price cap. As we've just seen, it's now $75. But actually, over the last month or so, it's been at $80, $85. So Russia hasn't been selling its oil anywhere near the market price. It's still offering this discount and those discounts are equating to a price that's coming in below $60. So whilst Russia is saying we don't agree with the price cap, in reality it is complying with the price cap and this would indicate that the new price cap that's come into place for refined products will also be effective and it's likely that Russia will be selling its refined products going forwards below all of those price caps. So let's run some calculations to have a look at what the impact of the European ban and the price cap are going to be on Russia's revenues. This chart shows Russia's revenues earned from refined oil products over the last 12 months. Now, if you follow the channel, you'll probably be familiar with this chart because we've looked at it two or three times before. But for anybody that hasn't seen it before, I'll give you a quick rundown of the color coding. The red section at the bottom, which is very small, represents sales to China. 
The blue section, which is the largest section, represents sales to the EU. The very thin green section, which is just above the light blue section, represents sales to Egypt. The yellow and brown section are sales to India. The grey section is a variety of other countries. The turquoise green section at the top is Turkey. The purple section actually represents sales to the USA. And the dark red section on the top right hand corner represents other countries. And this chart shows us a number of really important things with regards to refined oil products. Firstly, the vast majority of all the revenue that Russia is earning is still coming from the EU. The scale on the left hand side of this chart is measured in millions of euros per day. So you can see that as of the 29th of January, Russia was earning around 130 million euros per day from the sale of refined products. And of this amount, around 80 million was coming directly from the EU. And this is because there was no ban in place as of the 29th of January. So all of the countries of the EU were perfectly entitled to buy gasoline and diesel and whatever else they wanted in terms of refined products directly from Russia. But as the ban has now come into full effect, that 80 million of revenue will be lost immediately. So that means that Russia's revenues from refined products will drop from 130 million euros per day to 50 million euros per day. However, the situation is actually worse than that because the price cap is also now in effect. And that's been set at a level around 30% below the market rates. So if you apply that 30% discount to the 50 million of remaining revenue, that's another 15 million of revenue per day that Russia is losing. So the combined impact of the European ban and the price caps is a loss of around 95 million euros of revenue every single day for Russia. And if you annualize that figure by multiplying it by 365, that equates to lost revenue of around 35 billion euros. And this is in addition to the ban and the price cap on crude products that came in on the 5th of December, which is estimated to have had an impact of around $150 million per day on Russia's revenues. So when you combine the two of these, the total impact is around $90 billion of lost revenue for Russia. Now you may be sitting there thinking this isn't going to happen because all Russia will do is divert all of these refined products to India and China to make up all of the lost sales to the EU. But if you look at what's been happening over the course of the last 12 months, that is not evidenced at all in these figures. Sales to China, which are shown by the very small red section at the bottom of this chart, and also to India, which are shown by the very small brown yellow section in the middle, have been very small and have remained very small over the course of the last 12 months. And there are multiple reasons for that. Firstly, refined products are more expensive. So China and India don't really want to buy them from Russia. They prefer to buy cheaper crude oil directly from Russia and then do the refining process themselves so they can add the value within their home market and create an industry and employment and all the other things that go with the refinery process. In addition to that, from a logistical point of view, it's more of a headache to buy refined products. As we saw in the diagram earlier, there are multiple different refined products. They all have to be transported separately in separate vessels. And therefore, when you're dealing with the loading and unloading and transport within your country, there's a lot more logistics involved because the ships are much smaller. Therefore, they're bringing smaller quantities. You've got to have people handling all of that, loading it onto trucks and moving it within the country. So it is a lot more difficult to actually handle all of the refined products than it is to just take a large delivery of crude oil and then process it all yourself. So as you can see, Russia is facing a very real problem with regards to refined products because it's going to be very difficult to find new markets to replace all of those sales that it's losing from the EU because of the characteristics of refined oil. But actually the situation is much worse than this because Russia has built up a huge refinery industry. It has 25 refineries that have the capability of producing over 5.4 million barrels of refined products every single day. And when you look at the export breakdown for Russia, they're exporting around 5 million barrels of crude oil every day and around 3 million barrels of refined products. So refined products equate to around 40% of all of the volume of oil that Russia is handling. And this is going to cause a major problem for Russia because if they can't find new markets for the 3 million barrels of refined oil that they're producing every single day, then they're going to have to cut back on the volume of oil that they're refining. And the problem that that will cause them is that they will then need to find more markets for the crude oil because if they're not refining it, they'll need to do something else with that oil. Russia is pulling around 10 million barrels of oil out of the ground every single day. And as I mentioned before, Russia doesn't have the storage capacity to be able to just store it. It needs to keep moving it, selling it, 
passing it on to other people. So at the moment, it's putting 3 million barrels through the refinery process and then selling the majority of that product into Europe. Those sales have now stopped, so they won't be able to carry on refining the same volume of oil. So they'll need to find more markets for the crude oil. And this is going to put more pressure on Russia and potentially mean that they may have to offer bigger discounts to India and China to increase the volumes because the alternative from Russia's point of view is actually to cut back on production. And as I've mentioned in previous videos, that's the last thing that Russia wants to do. Over the course of the last 12 months, Russia has lost a lot of its business partners. Shell, BP and ExxonMobil have all walked away from the country. And these companies actually designed and built a lot of the oil and gas facilities that exist in Russia. And they had the technical expertise to be able to manage them. Now, if you cut back on production, that could cause you major problems because the last thing you want to do when you've got oil flowing out of the ground is to suddenly stop or restrict that flow because it could then cause you future problems with that flow. And the last thing that Russia wants to do at the moment, now that it's lost all of its trading partners, is to start messing around with its actual oil rigs and the drilling, because that could then cause them even greater problems. So the loss of these refined oil sales actually will have a big knock-on impact to crude oil sales because of the fact that they'll be refining less because they're not selling as much. And that oil has to go somewhere. If it's not going to the Russian refineries, it's going to have to go onto ships and go into other markets. So the introduction of the European ban on refined products and the price cap could actually have a knock-on impact directly to the crude oil prices that Russia's achieving because it needs to keep those volumes moving as quickly as possible. Now, with regards to the price cap, obviously the key issue is making sure that it's effective, that Russia actually complies with the terms and conditions. And the way that this is going to be managed is through the shipping. As we mentioned in previous videos, the shipping industry is dominated by the West. That's where it started life hundreds of years ago, and those companies are still dominant today. And this chart shows the ownership of ships and insurance companies used by Russia for moving its refined oil products. And as with the previous charts, this is up to the 29th of January. The large blue section here represents the EU and the G7. The dark blue section represents Norway and the other section represents the rest of the world. And what you can see here is that this chart is entirely dominated by the EU, the G7 and Norway. And whilst you would have expected Russia to start using less ships and shipping insurance from the EU and the G7 and Norway over the course of the last 12 months, when you look at this chart, they've actually increased the percentage. And Russia is currently using around 80% of their services. And the reason for this is that there just simply isn't enough capacity in the market for Russia to avoid using any of these ships. And actually, over the last 12 months, the situation has got worse because Europe is now having to import a lot of products over the sea. So the demand for shipping and shipping services has actually increased dramatically. And the reason for showing this is that it relates directly to the effective implication of the price cap. As I mentioned earlier in the video, if Russia tries to sell its refined products above the agreed caps, then these ships won't take those loads and it will invalidate all of the insurance, which means that those ships would not be permitted to dock at the ports and unload all of their cargo. So although Russia won't agree to the cap and they will state that they are absolutely not signing up to it, they don't really have any choice because if they lose access to all of these ships and shipping services, they simply won't be able to move any of the product and therefore their sales will fall even further. So what's the summary and conclusion today? Well, I wanted to post this video because today's the day that the ban and the price cap comes into effect for the refined products. And this is really being the missing part of the jigsaw in terms of the sanctions. This squares the circle. This draws a line under all of the products that Russia is selling into Europe and the G7. And as we've seen from the data that we've looked at today, up until the day that this ban was brought in, Russia was still selling the majority of its refined products to the European Union, more than 80 million euros per day. And the reason for that is that it's a very different market. India and China don't want to buy refined products because they're too expensive. They can do it themselves. All they want is the raw material. Give them the crude. They can do all of the refining in their own markets. That is more cost effective and also means they've got more control over what products they're buying. So Russia simply doesn't have the option of selling more volume to India and China because the market just isn't there. And this represents around 40% of all of the oil products that Russia is selling. So this is a really big part 
of their revenue. And one of the other problems as we've been through in this video is that Russia has also set up a huge refining industry within its country. It's got 25 mega refineries. They can produce over 5 million barrels of refined product every single day. So there's a lot of people obviously employed in that industry. It's a big part of the Russian economy. And because the market is now disappearing, it's going to see a contraction in terms of the volume of product that's moving through those refineries. And that's going to cause a problem in itself. Obviously, all the people who are employed there, will they still need all those numbers? Will they still need 25 mega refineries? But the other issue that's going to cause Russia a major problem is that those 3 million barrels of crude oil that were being sent to the refineries for refining every single day won't actually be needed anymore. So Russia's going to need to find somewhere to actually move those 3 million barrels of crude oil to. So that means that they've got an even bigger mountain to climb in terms of finding new markets for the crude. And as I mentioned earlier in the video, I think it's likely that they'll have to offer even bigger discounts to India and China to try to increase the volumes so that they don't have to cut back on any production because that would be the ultimate disaster from Russia's point of view. If they suddenly have to close down or scale back some of their drilling facilities, that would be a nightmare. And in terms of the impact on Russia's revenues, as we calculated earlier, this is likely to lead to a reduction of around 95 million euros per day in Russia's revenues. And that's on top of the 150 million that Russia has lost as a result of the crude oil ban and price cap that came in on the 5th of December. So on a combined basis, this equates to around $250 million per day, or roughly $90 billion per year that Russia has lost from its revenues. So that is obviously going to hurt the Russian economy, and it'll be interesting to see how things pan out over the course of the next three to six months. But as I mentioned earlier in the video, I also want to touch upon what the impact on the global economy is here. And unfortunately, it's not good news, because the European Union, by banning the purchase of all of these refined products, is forcing all of its countries to actually buy more expensive product, because Russia was selling the cheapest in the market. So that's going to increase the cost for all of those countries. There will also be transport costs, because it's coming from further away. Russia was the nearest provider, if they're now having to turn to other providers, such as the USA and the Middle East, then there's going to be higher transport costs. So all of this is going to add more costs to the economies in Europe. That's going to potentially fuel inflation further, which is an ongoing problem. And as we've talked about before, the way that central banks deal with inflation is by increasing interest rates. If interest rates go up further, then that's going to cause more problems for people who've got debt, and that's going to put more pressure on the economy and potentially force a lot of European countries into a recession. So I I think whilst this ban is useful in terms of trying to get Russia to stop the war in Ukraine, that's what it's been designed for, to cut off the revenues to the point where Russia actually says enough is enough, we're going to stop all of the fighting. But the flip side for Europe is that it's increasing their costs, pushing a lot of these economies towards a recession in 2023. And as I mentioned before, Europe is connected to the whole rest of the world. So if Europe goes into a recession, there will be a knock-on impact for everybody else. And potentially we could see a lot of different countries all around the world going into recession during the course of 2023, partially as a result of these sanctions. So hopefully you found today's video useful, informative and thought-provoking. If you've liked what I've said, then please give me that thumbs up and thank you for watching this video all the way through to the end.